How's it going everybody? This is Dakota from the Techies World and I've got an interesting video for you this week. Now most of you who are subscribers to this channel are definitely looking for a tech video, but I've got a little bit of an interesting video for you this week. We're going to take a look at this old girl. This is a vacuum cleaner obviously as you can see, but this is a 1989, circa 1989, um, Electrolux Grand Marquise um, canister vacuum cleaner and uh, I want to give you an overview and a demonstration of this machine. Now for those of you who are unaware, back when I was a little kid I used to have a fascination with vacuum cleaners and I still do a little bit and uh, so I want to take you on a little bit of a tour of this machine and uh, kind of give you a demonstration. I'm sitting in a very uncomfortable position so let's re-angle the camera and we'll get right into the video. Okay so here's the vacuum cleaner itself and uh, I've taken the hose off so that way it's a little bit easier to uh, move around and you can see it a little bit better here. Now this is the canister itself. Here in the US we call them canisters. Um, in the UK you guys call them cylinders and I believe in Australia they're called a barrel, uh, a barrel type uh, cleaner but this is what we call a canister and um, this and I actually much prefer canister cleaners over uprights in my humble opinion. Uh, I just happen to like them a little bit better. Uh, now this is, as I said earlier, this is a Grand Marquise, um, or it also could be called a Grand Marquis, uh, but I believe it's technically pronounced Marquise. A lot of people get these cleaners confused because the metal bodied machines do look very similar. This is a metal body cleaner, and uh, the whole body of this machine is metal. And uh, this is one of the very last metal body machines, as a matter of fact, because I believe this dates from about 1989, um, and I believe this model ran up until sometime in the early 90s, um, uh, when it was replaced with, I think, the Diplomat is when it was replaced with, and that's a plastic bodied machine. A lot of people get these metal body cleaners confused uh, because they do look very similar, especially the um, Grand Marquise, which is this, and the Superlux, they, because they do look very, very similar. Uh, however, you can tell which model is which by the serial number, which is underneath the machine. Uh, speaking about um, older Electroluxes, I actually grew up with Electrolux. Uh, when I was first born, my mother had a, I believe it was a Diplomat, and... Um, and she had that, and I believe she had that for the first few years. I'm not entirely sure whatever happened to that machine. So that, so I kind of grew up my first years. I kind of grew up with an Electrolux. And my mom also said that she had a Diamond Jubilee uh, years earlier. And I also want to mention this too, because this is important. The Electrolux vacuums that you can go to like uh, Sears, if anybody still shops there, or wherever, and buy an Electrolux vacuum, it is not the same as this. Um, I know that'll because the names are the same, but they're the not. This is Electrolux USA, and all of Electrolux USA vacuums were made in the U.S. for the U.S., and as far as I know, they were never exported out of North America. In the early 2000s, Electrolux USA sold the Electrolux name back to Electrolux Sweden, and they rebranded as Eris. And uh, their vacuums are still called Lux because they do have the rights to the Lux name, but they can't brand their vacuums as Electrolux because they don't hold that name. So the U.S. Electrolux is still around. They just rebranded as Eris. And um, you could only buy these vacuums from door-to-door -door salespeople, which I don't even think anybody does anymore. Uh, or dealers. If you went to your local vacuum shop and they were a dealer, you could buy one of these machines. I'm not sure how much this particular model cost, but I know it would have been in the hundreds. Uh, these were not cheap vacuums when they were around. And still today, um, Eris machines are not cheap by any means, I don't think. But enough about that. I just want to clear that up because I know that gets confusing. You see Electrolux in the stores and you see these older models and you think they're the same. No, they are completely different. Uh, so uh, they bear no resemblance to these older machines. This is the Grand Marquise here. So let's take a little tour around the machine. Uh, around the uh, sides of the machine here, it's got this nice, um, it's got this nice uh, rubber bumper. So in case if you bang it into furniture, it won't uh, mar the furniture. As you can see, this machine is used. Again, I said I bought it from Goodwill, but uh, it is in very nice shape. I did do some partial disassembly, and I did clean it up a little bit. Uh, it's got some evidence that it's been banged into furniture. You can kind of see right around here, you can see some of the, uh, what looks like somebody banged it into furniture. But that's what the bumper guard is designed to do. It's designed to protect uh, the machine and your furniture. It's on the uh, left and right sides of the cleaner here. So you've got this. Got your um, cord rewind here. 
this actually is a very interesting thing. Uh, there's actually no button to rewind the cord. It's called a pull-pull system. So you just pull it out and then it will, we gotta pull it out a certain length. I'll show you this later, but you pull the cord. Let me get you a little bit of a better view here. And uh, you just pull the cord out and then it will lock. And, and then when you wanna retract the cord, you just pull it lightly and the cord will retract back in. Uh, this cord rewind on this model is a little sluggish. Um, and you kind of have to help it in a little bit. Um, I may have to look at that. But um, I think almost all Electrolux cleaners have had that. Uh, so that's a nice little feature. So you have that. Um, it's got this nice uh, bottom, let me see here. It's got this nice little, um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a rubberized bottom. So you can set it up on its end like this. And uh, you can set it up like that on your hard floor. And it won't mar your hard floor. And it also works great for storage. You can store it that way. Uh, as well. As I said, this is a metal bodied machine. This is underneath. This is all metal. This is a metal body cleaner. It's all metal. And uh, so this is a very nice, well built machine. You got, let me see if I can get a better view here. There we go. We've got one. Um, not so, actually. I just noticed that this, this actually is supposed to be a swivel caster, but it looks like the caster is actually. Um, it's a, I didn't notice this until now. Uh, this is supposed to be a swivel caster, but what's happened is the caster is literally just fixed in position. I'll have to look at that, but that's supposed to be a swivel caster. And uh, on the back here, we've got two um, large wheels here on the back, two large wheels. This is supposed to be a swivel caster. And here's the serial number if anybody wants to uh, help me date this. Um, and I'll show you how, let me, Ugh, scooch a little bit closer to the camera here because I can't reach the camera so I can't zoom in uh, Let me see there Ugh. <laughs> Got a glance. Okay, there you go. Um, I'll read it to you here um, This is serial number M double two six three four F and how you can tell this is a Grand Marquis model is the Grand Marquis models started with the letter M and, and ended with the letter F. So if you have one of these or you want to get one of these and you don't know if it's a Grand Marquis or if it's a Super Lux, look at the serial number and if it starts with the letter M and ends with the letter F, then that means it's a Grand Marquis. I believe this came out in about 1989, but I'm not sure when this particular model was made. I'm not sure if anybody can date that for me. So there's that. On the top here, let me set the machine back down and kind of scooch back a little bit more and uh, bring it forward a little bit here. We have the on-off switch here. This is a little different than some of the older uh, models that actually had a rocker switch that you could switch and turn on and off. I actually had a, a Super J, uh, one of these, um, just a few years ago. Um, I actually had one of these metal bodied machines and it was called the Super J. No. Um, I didn't have the Super J, I had the, um, what was it, Olympia. I had that model and it had a rocker switch to turn the power on and off. This just has a dedicated off and then on button. So that's on, that's off, on, off. So that's a little bit of a different design. I actually kind of like this better than the rocker switch. You have your carry handle here. Uh, this machine does have a little bit of weight to it. Uh, it's not the lightest weight vacuum, but it certainly isn't the heaviest by any means. So um, it does have a little bit of weight to it, but this is how you would carry it. And right here, this is a access port here, and you actually have a blower here. So you can stick the hose right in here, and you could actually blow with this. So um, I'm not sure if you could you know, do any attachment, but you could blow with this. This actually works good for like if you live in an older house with boilers and you had like those old radiators in each room, you could blow, you could stick the hose in here and then you could blow the dust and dirt out behind the radiator. So you would take the uh, hose here, this is the hose, and you would take it and you would stick it in here and you gotta line up, there's two little, um, there's two lugs right here, one here and then one on the bottom, and you gotta line it up with the um, lugs on here and then, oops, I didn't line it up. You should hear it click in. Uh, hold on here. There it is. You hear it click. Now that's locked in position. So now you can take the hose and you could blow uh, with it. So you can blow dust and dirt uh, out behind crevices and um, things like that. So you do have the blower function. And um, I think even the current Eris Lux cleaners still have the blower function. Some of them, I think. Uh, so you have a little blower door here, 
to cover that up when you're not using it. And right on here, on the back of the handle, I want to show you this. I don't know how well you can see this. This uh, plastic, this little grooved plastic piece right here on the back of the handle. This is technically where you would store this. Now, I didn't get this with this machine. Uh, this is the combination tool that I had from my Olympia that I had. I actually kept some of the tools from the Olympia. And uh, because all these tools still fit a lot of these cleaners. This funny looking tool right here is your combination tool. It's your dusting brush and it's also your upholstery nozzle. Take note vacuum cleaner manufacturers. This is how you build a multi-tool. This is really the only multi-tool that I've ever really liked. You've got this nice soft, this is a very nice and soft dusting brush. Um, I think this is natural horsehair. I think this is very, very soft. And then you've got these two wings. You open up the wings. So you put the hose in like this to do uh, your dusting. So you can do your dusting jobs with this, your ceiling fans, your curtains, and things like that. And actually, you could use this on your TV screens. It's, it's, it's very, very soft. And then if you wanted to do your upholstery, you stick the hose in this end, and you open out the wings, and now you have a very, very nice dusting. So now you have this very nice upholstery tool. This, and it works kind of like this. Technically, this is the only multi-tool that I felt was ever worth a damn. This is probably the best way of building a multi-tool. Some of the newer models, they actually have a three-in-one where when you collapse the wings, it turns into a crevice tool. You could technically use it this way on the arms of your furniture. You could kind of clean that if you collapse the wings, but technically it's a two-in-one. So this is your upholstery, and then you close the wings like that, and then you insert it the other way to do your dusting. This is a really, really nice multi-tool. Um, and this is standard, and I think Eris, I think still sells this multi-tool, still bundles this multi-tool with some of their cleaners. So this is a very, very awesome multi-tool. And it's really the only tool that's that's even worth anything, really, uh, in my opinion. And uh, so this, um, got a little, yeah, some of the, um, yeah, this brush is old. Some of the horse hairs are starting to come off. Um, so this little raised plastic piece uh, right here is designed to hold the multi-tool. So you slide it in and it's designed to hold the multi-tool. Uh, this also would have came with a crevice tool. I actually don't have one of those. And the other tool it would have came with, now I'm not sure if it would have came with this or if it would have came with a dedicated hard floor nozzle, but this is Electrolux multi uh, floor tool. Uh, this also came from the Olympia that I had. Uh, this is a double-sided flip over tool. So for this side, uh, you would, so this side, is for doing your rugs so you could do this so like if you have like you know uh, fringe rugs or something you could put this and and uh, do your rugs it's got a very nice metal uh, strip here on the top and the bottom and uh, this bottom metal strip I believe is designed to be sort of like to help pick up uh, lint and things so that's kind of like what that is down at the bottom and you would flip it over and you would have this dusting and then you would have this floor tool this is for doing your hard floors and uh, so However, as you see here, the air vent is right in the middle, but if I flip it around, it's closed off. Uh, how do you switch from one side to the other? Well, these, these two little um, latches here on each side of the neck, you would squeeze these two latches in, and the whole neck of it comes off like this. And then now you just flip it around. So if I wanted to do my hard floors, I would flip it around, insert it in this way with this end up, the rug end up, and this will click right into place and now as you can see it's opened up so I can do my hard floors and you can see it's closed off and if I want to go back to my rugs I just squeeze the two lugs back in on the neck and it's a little bit stiff this is an old tool um, and it's just there it is and then I flip it around and I insert it the other way and there you go it's open back up to do my rugs so this is an also, um, again, I'm not sure if the Grand Marquise would have came with this um, uh, two-in-one tool or if it would have came with a dedicated hard floor nozzle. Uh, I'm not really sure which one it would have came with. But as far as I know, I haven't tried it, but as far as I know, this will still fit on to the extension one. So um, I haven't tried it, but I don't see any reason why um, it wouldn't fit. So let me take the uh, brush off once again here, and I'll show you. This is the front of the Grand Marquise here. Whoop, this is the front right here. So this is the end where you plug the hose in right here. Now on the top here, it's going to be hard to 
see here, I can't reach the camera, but uh, right here we have the latch for the bag door right here in the middle. And this little thing right here, um, I never, in all my years of being a vacuum guru and a vacuum collector before I ultimately sold off almost all, all the vacuums I had when I was a kid, um, I really could not figure out what this little dial is. And it goes from one all the way up to four. And a normal setting is three. Uh, I really don't know what the heck this thing is designed to do. Um, I think it's designed to increase the sensitivity. Uh, this is an automatic machine, which basically means that when the bag gets full, the machine will automatically cut itself off when the bag is full. Earlier Electrolux machines actually had an auto eject feature where um, when the bag was full, it would automatically eject the bag out of the machine. The bag door would open and there was this um, little metal thing that would move and it would eject the bag out of the machine. It was really awesome. This unfortunately doesn't have the auto eject, but it does automatically shut itself off when the bag is full. Uh, this must be what this dial does, is it increases the sensitivity of the bag. I, I don't know what this dial thing does. I, I, I never could figure it out, but that's the only thing I can think of. It has something to do with the automatic control um, to increase the sensitivity. So like if you're picking up Finder, uh, it'll shut off when the bag is not full because because the bag will block up when you're picking up like flour or sawdust or if you're picking up general dirt uh, or I don't really know but if anybody knows what that dial is for and exactly what it does please let me know because I never could figure it out but I think it's got something to do with the automatic control for cutting off the machine uh, when the bag is full or the bag is blocked so that's got to be what it's for there is no filter of any kind on this machine they really didn't start putting filters uh, on their canisters until the plastic bodied machine. So the bag is the only filter you have. So technically these things are not um, very great if you have allergies because these things are not very great at filtering, I don't think. That's that. So as I said here, we've got the bag door latch. So we just hit the latch in and the bag door comes open. And uh, here we have the model number. It is model 1521. It's actually written right here on the bag door. It's kind of hard to see but it's written right here this little button right here this little I know it's hard to see but this little button right here this is a safety feature uh, to prevent you from using the machine without a bag and it hits the cardboard part of the bag here and uh, that button will go in and it will tell the machine to turn on and uh, so basically that's a feature to where you can't use the machine without a bag and uh, this is the bag here the bag is stored in here and uh, I have used this machine the bags not overly full here but uh, that's the bag in here, and this is what it looks like inside. Kind of get you a little bit of a better view here. There you go. You can kind of see the fan down in there. The motor is back here. The motor is way back in here. You can kind of see the metal fan in there. There you go. And uh, so the motor is down in there. So obviously, if you were to use this without a bag, you know, if you were to break this little switch off or something, uh, I mean, I mean, why would you? But you know, if you tried to, you know, tape that down or something to where you could use it without a bag, you would technically just completely destroy the motor because there's nothing, as you see, there's no filter there. There's nothing there to protect the motor. So if you were to use it without a bag, all that dirt would go through the motor and you would be uh, ruining your vacuum cleaners. So that's the reason why they did that. Speaking of the bag, this is the bag here. I will have the vacuum enthusiasts yell at me for not using genuine bags. Um, I don't know if you can buy genuine bags for these anymore. I'm not sure. So I just use these Arm & Hammer bags. Pretty much all of these older cleaners use Type C bags. So uh, And these bags are quite easy to find, the aftermarket bags. And uh, the, they're also self-sealing, these bags here. There's a little uh, rubber. I actually do have another pack of bags, but I forgot to bring them out. But it has this little rubber, this little... Um, thing here. It's supposed to self-seal, sort of, but it really doesn't work that way. So that's kind of like what it's supposed to do. Like when the bag is full, it's, I don't know, it doesn't really work that well. That's the cleaner itself. Now let me show you the uh, hose here. Now this is the hose that it uses. This is the original Electrolux cloth braided hose. And uh, this is technically cloth braided, this hose. As you can see, it's got the, it's braided with the blue little um, I don't know what you would call those, the blue little things in there that's it's braided with. This is actually, this this hose is made out of cloth. And um, the problems, and I don't really like this hose. Number one, the hose is too short. Uh, it's not a very long hose. The other thing that happens with these is over time, the hose stiffens up over time. First of all, these hoses were never all that flexible to begin with. But the other thing that happens is over time, the hoses would stiffen up to the point where it's very, very hard to maneuver. And uh, also these cloth braided hoses also fall apart 
uh, from age. Um, this one isn't bad, but around the handle area, right in here, I don't know if you can see that, there is a little bit of wear damage right here, and I can tell there is some suction being leaked uh, from this area right here because I can hear the air rushing. So uh, this is just what happens to these, and uh, these hoses really don't last very long. Well, well, they lasted when the machine was new, but as the machines age, this ultimately happens, and um, you can actually get a vinyl hose for these. Um, I believe Eris sells a vinyl hose you can buy for these, um, but I believe the genuine Eris hoses are something like $100 the last time I checked. Uh, so um, you can get aftermarket hoses uh, that are vinyl, but uh, the aftermarket hoses can be a little um, iffy. So well, this is the handle of the hose here. It's what we call a pistol grip because uh, it looks like a pistol. Uh, so that's why it's called a pistol grip. And uh, this actually is a power hose, as you can see right there. There's a little power takeoff socket, and that connects up to the wand to connect the power nozzle. And there's also a suction relief control. Uh, there's also a kind of a suction control, kind of like right back in here. It's a dial, and it opens up these vents on each side of the handle to let air in. So it's sort of like a suction control uh, to where if you're cleaning less delicate things, um, you know, you can kind of turn the suction down a little bit, although the suction through these cloth hoses isn't all that great to begin with, um, you know, but if you do need a little less suction, you can open up these vents by turning that dial and it will um, basically add air into the hose. And then finally, here's the power nozzle. This is the original Electrolux power nozzle uh, that would have came with this machine. And as you can see, it's got this uh, L shape to it. It's an L shaped head. And the reason this is L-shaped for is, is for two reasons. Uh, one, it's a larger width, so it takes less time to clean. If you So if you live in a bigger home, uh, it would take less time to clean because you got a little bit extra width. But the other thing that the L-shaped uh, head does is it helps you guide around the legs of furniture a lot easier. So that way you can go around the legs of furniture uh, and things. So the L-shaped head works with that. You've got the on-off switch right here. Uh, to turn the power head on and off. A little bit of a bizarre place, but it's a little switch. You flip it backward to turn it off and then forward to turn it on. You've got your on off switch right there. Uh, you've got a release uh, button right here to release the power nozzle from the wand. And that right there is where the hose plugs into to uh, supply the power. So the power nozzle plugs in here and there's a connector that goes all the way up the length of this tube and it connects into there. And uh, so that's where it so that's where it gets its power from. Let me show you underneath. I had tore this apart, and uh, I had cleaned it. So um, this is the underneath of the power nozzle here. This is the brush roll uh, of, of of this particular power nozzle. It's a wooden brush roll. Um, I believe almost all of these Electrolux cleaners had uh, wooden brush rolls, which is much better than plastic, uh, actually. And uh, they have these brushes here. The stiffness of the brush, again, I believe this might be original. I don't think it's ever been replaced. But um, again, it's got a little bit of dirt on it, it because I have been using this machine. Uh, the stiffness, mm, not too soft, but not too hard. Kind of, kind of in the middle. They're not bad. And uh, they don't really protrude out very much. But, um, you know, they do protrude. You've got this... Um, little finer I don't know how well you can see it here you've got a let me get a little bit closer you've got this um, little brush in the back here this little static little movable brush here that's actually for hard floors so now that'll help pick up on hard floors uh, this actually is belt driven the belt is actually right um, I believe the belt is right here and uh, for edge cleaning um, not too bad as you can see the brushes don't get up to the edge but you do have these suction channels on uh, each side of the head. So suction will get through there, um, but on this side, mm, doesn't do that well because I believe this is where the, the uh, belt is. It's a, a cogged belt, it's a tooth belt. And uh, so I believe the belt is right here. But again, this is the brush roll. Not bad, um, I don't think. Um, I don't think these do a, um, I mean, you know, I think these do a uh, pretty good job, uh, honestly, uh, for the brush roll. And uh, so this, also, this is a problem with this one. The power nozzle keeps coming unplugged. I think there's supposed to be, it looks like there's supposed to be a thing right here that is supposed to secure the lead for the power head into the nozzle, but it looked like that broke off at one point. So um, I will have to work on maybe trying to get that to secure in there because it does fall out a lot. And we're going to 
uh, insert the hose. You can only insert the hose one way. See, it says top. I don't know where you can see that, but it says uh, top right there on the hose. That tells you how to insert the hose. And you just insert the hose just like, there it is. Insert it until it clicks. That's in. And now we're going to take our uh, handle and we're going to insert it into the wand. And to release, you've got a little uh, button right here to release the uh, power nozzle, to release the hose from the power nozzle or the wand. Click it in until it clicks, just like that. That's in. And again, to release, you just push this button in and pull out, and you can see it pulls in and out. And again, just push it in until it clicks, just like that. It's clicked in, and the right there it connects right in for the power lead for the power nozzle that is the electrolux grand marquise let's go ahead and uh, get this plugged in and we'll do a quick demonstration okay so as you can see i've made a little bit of a mess <laughs> here on my office carpet i've got some uh, cereal here it's kind of old stale cereal so it's not that big of a deal here and uh, i kind of walked over it with my shoes to kind of ground it into the carpet a little bit to give it a little bit of a test so we're going to do a quick pickup test here and uh, I've got the Grand Marquise plugged in here. Uh, speaking about the length of the cord, I don't think these older Electrolux cleaners are blessed with a lot of cord. I don't know the cord length, but it's kind of short. But um, I can pretty much almost do my whole office um, without plugging in again to another outlet in the room. So um, the, the cable length on these is not very long, but um, it does do the job. So let's go ahead and do a quick uh, demo. We're going to go right through the middle of it here and uh, you can also hear kind of how quiet it is too. There's something about Electrolux cleaners that are really nice sounding. Um, they have a very distinct sound to them, both the cleaner and the power nozzle. They have a very distinct sound. And uh, so I'll turn the power nozzle off first to kind of let you hear uh, what it sounds like without the power nozzle. So again, we'll turn it on here. And again, that's not bad. That's a very nice sound. It's a lot quieter than a lot of today's vacuums. Uh, let me just do a quick uh, suction judge here. Um, now again, as I said, this hose, kind of like right in here, uh, there is some air rushing through this part of the hose. So the suction is going to be greater at the cleaner end than it will be at the hose um, because of that. But... Um But anyway, I think you can hear kind of the air rushing right in here. That's where it is. And the suction through the hose isn't all that great. But uh, the suction on these isn't bad. It's it's these cloth hoses. They um, kind of compromise suction. And also this one is a little bit damaged right here. So there's some suction leaking. But um, we'll see how well it does. Of course, with the sound of the power nozzle, it will increase the noise just a little bit. But not by much. Uh, they're not all that loud, these older um, cleaners are. We'll see how well it can do. Now, that really isn't bad. That is one pass, and that one pass back and forward, it's left a little bit. There's a little bit of crumbs and stuff left, but really, that is not bad. Now, from the naked eye, from the camera, it looks clean. But looking down close, I'm putting my hand through it, and I can still feel there's a little bit of, it, it, it's mostly the ground and stuff from when I walked over it. Uh, it's kind of there, but again, backwards and forward again, maybe one or two more times we'll get all this up, but that is not a bad result. So let's go ahead and finish the rest of this and clean the rest of this up, what do we say? Ugh. And again, I've learned also, by the way, you can probably tell I'm wearing khakis. Uh, I learned a long time back, fat people do not look good in jeans. Uh, so, uh, I, so I learned that a long time back. So 
Anyway, let's go ahead and finish cleaning up this mess. <laughs> And then when you're done, you just unplug the cord right here. This is the cord here. And again, as I said, it's a pull-pull system, so you just give it a little bit of a tug. And again, the cord, I do have it in my hand here, so let's give it one more go here. The cord we wind on this is a little bit sluggish. Um, you kind of have to help it along a little bit. Uh, get in there. It is a little bit sluggish. It's a pull-pull, and there it is. The cord is rewound back into the machine, just like that. And that is the Grand Marquise canister vacuum from Electrolux. Okay, so as I said, this channel mostly focuses around technology, hence the name, the Techies World. But I just wanted to share uh, this video with you uh, because, as I said multiple times in the past, this is the only YouTube channel I have. And um, I know some of you vacuum collectors out there uh, might enjoy this video. And uh, as I said at the top of the video, uh, when I was a little kid, I used to be a huge vacuum cleaner uh, guru. And uh, I still kind of have an interest in vacuums, just a tiny bit, but not a whole lot. So, um, yes, I am a weird bozo. And uh, so uh, I just wanted to show this to you. Uh, again, I have always been a fan of Electrolux cleaners because, again, as I told you, I basically grew up with one because my mom had one when I was first born. And uh, so I kind of have a special place in my heart uh, for uh, these older uh, vacuum cleaners. So I just wanted to show that to you. Uh, that is the Electrolux Grand Marquis canister vacuum from around 1989 and again if anybody can date that for me that would be great okay so with that i'm going to go ahead and end this video if you like this video please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from the techies world which this channel mostly focuses around technology and not weird stuff like this uh please go ahead and click that subscribe button and click that bell icon to turn on notifications then that way you'll be notified every time a new video is posted check out the website follow all of those social media accounts and i will see you guys with the next tech video have a great week and I'll see you next time. Significant, you're missing it. Reaction to efficient, cause the beat is so explicit in my dreams and I'll elicit it. Not enough to see it, scratch it, read it, call it, beat it, be the first to be an enemy.